spend our time connecting, networking, bringing people together, identifying opportunities and looking for partners. The Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council is a not-for-profit commercial organisation that has been given a mandate by all the heads of government of the 54 nations of the Commonwealth to create business opportunities. The Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council is a fairly new relationship to us, but already, um, within a year, it's proving to be a really important pillar for our international plans. I think what is interesting is that the UK government post-Brexit have really been pushing British businesses um, and the country as a whole to look more globally at the world rather than just at Europe. Our job is all about creating opportunities and opportunities create prosperity for countries and that involves inward investment and outward investment, exporting and importing. When we maximise prosperity for countries we improve the quality of life for people who live in those countries. Uh, we improve the number of jobs that are available, the investment that's coming in, the standard of life and we try to support economies as they develop. Often clients look to us for support in a particular country. Um, we're an English law firm but with a global reach. We are gaining information which is absolutely key from Sam and her colleagues. When we're working in trade and investment, relationships are everything. I think Erwin Mitchell is absolutely unique. It's certainly unique in our network and I think it's probably unique as a law firm. What struck me about Erwin Mitchell was the very clever but slightly unusual strategic decision to be a UK based law firm with a global outlook. The way they operate this model is exceptional. Our Commonwealth network includes a wide range of companies and countries that require the very uh, specialised and bespoke services they offer. Much of what we do is, is based on trust. Much of what we do is based on being informed. Sam has been incredibly engaged with what we're trying to do, has put us in touch with some really key members of the organisation and I think is part of why we have such high hopes for our relationship. Working with Brian is a dream. Uh, I wish everyone I worked with was like Brian. He is highly professional, incredibly intelligent and good at his craft. He's very calm and very insightful. He can see instantly how Erwin Mitchell's services can support uh, whatever business opportunity we are working on. I would say in at least half of the conversations we have with international clients or international um, law firms that the responsible business agenda comes up as a topic. It is increasingly important. The whole value system of the Commonwealth is based on shared democratic values, human rights and ESG principles. There is a diverse range of religions, of cultures, of race, of history, but we are all bound by common values. I think Erwin Mitchell shares these values and you can see that from the way it operates its business. It is diverse, it is inclusive. I think international clients probably have even an even greater reliance on their legal advisors when they come into the UK. And I think the ability for us and our lawyers to, to be that friendly face, to be that guiding hand, is sometimes a real privilege. My impression is that the people at Irwin Mitchell really care about their clients and about the work that they're doing. They go the extra mile and they understand that you know, people need to be looked after, not just in a legal sense, but in an emotional sense as well. Sam Brackett. Um, I am 16 years old. I'm Vicky Brackett and I'm the Group Chief Commercial Officer at Erwin Mitchell. I had my second child, Sam, and he was born with Down syndrome. So a really big transition for our family to make when he was born and really we had no, no idea what we were dealing with. He's been an integral part of our family from day one. I like to feel happy about school. Uh, just 
Um, Emily does a tick a bit nervous about that. Just we're just just Kayan. Like he'll be alright. He's about to finish mainstream secondary now. He's in year eleven. Um, and what every single one of his teachers has said to us when he's been there is he's changed that class, he's changed that teacher's career, been the best teaching year of their lives because they've had to think differently and Sam has made them think differently. And I math the best because it's a little bit of very hard and a little bit easy. I asked for some advice from our public law team around his EHCP at a time where we were trying really hard to get the right provision into his plan. So for all those years you fight on their behalf, and then all of a sudden, Erwin Mitchell saw Sam as the individual that needed the support and the advice, and they gave brilliant advice. The government is so happy about the syndrome. Does it help with the syndrome? The Down syndrome bill is a really important piece of legislation. There's no framework that you pick up as a parent of a child with Down syndrome to say, this is the roadmap. These are people that can help. These are organisations that can help. And now there is going to be an obligation on the government to make that provision. It will be life-changing, the legislation, certainly for our family and for many, many families that we know. I like swimming the best, swimming like frog court, breaststroke, a breaststroke, a butterfly. You've got everything you like to do. It just um, it take me a tick breath and have it go. I think balancing work, life and home, regardless of whether you have a child with a disability, is one of the trickiest things any of us ever do. I think I do everything a bit badly. <laughs> it's probably how I cope, I muddle through. Um, I think having an infrastructure and a network that works for you. Um, I think accepting that you won't do everything perfectly, that you will make mistakes. My mum is so pretty, uh, she's so lovely. It's so kind, a bit of love and a big hug. What I love about Sam are his cuddles and his confidence when he walks into a situation that he's never seen before and he embraces it and gets on with it. I love my family so much. Gorgeous family. He's the best friend for her. I think there's been a big difference in the in the way that I feel um, now as opposed to quite soon after my injury and it's it's nice to reflect on how much more confident I feel. It was just before Christmas in 2009 and um, I was just a passenger in a car. The driver just lost control of the vehicle it ended up flipping over onto the roof, which left me with a spinal cord injury. I then spent nine months in hospital before I was able to be rehabilitated enough to move back home. I felt completely overwhelmed and I couldn't imagine how my life could be happy and feel good. When we originally contacted Owen Mitchell, they were just really understanding and conscientious about the situation supporting me since the very beginning of the claim and continued supporting me all through the last 10 years. It was so important to be able to organise the interim payment. If we'd not had access to that, it would have put my rehab and recovery and my whole life completely on hold. My friends and my family are so important to me and they've supported me all the way through my life and they also know me and the life that that I lived before my injury and also that that I'm just the same now but with differences in my abilities finally sorted it's, um, it's hard to explain, it was like the biggest weight had been lifted off my shoulders. When I found out that the farm wasn't left to me in a will, and there was no will apparently, um, it was a bit disappointing really because, you know, I'd been told for nearly 40 years that it was all sorted. I used to milk the cows on the farm and uh, do the silage in and look after everything. It was just a nice place to be and I used to really like being there. I'd known the owner all my life, he'd grown up with my mother and 
My father had done a lot of building work on the farm in the early 70s and I sort of went up as a kid and never came away really. I got in touch with her with Mitch looking for a solicitor named Paula Myers. I got on really well with her and she's very easy to talk to. It was a bit unnerving and you're yeah, concerned about the future, aren't you? But, you know, I sat down and we had a good chat and when I left I felt 100 times better. And they just kept me grounded all the way and told me I was right and that we'd do it. They just sort of said, hey, you sat down because you've won. And that was about it, really. And I can't remember what was said after that. They could have said anything. I was fairly happy. We must admit, I was fairly happy, yeah. Elated, I would say, really. Just looking forward to carrying on with my life as it used to be before. Knowing that my future's secure for my family and my children and my grandchildren. <laughs> morning and um, I suppose go, going outside and just, just grateful to be honest. I was passenger in the car that I was travelling in down a uh, could be called country road and um, unfortunately they slipped off into a farmer's field in a ditch. When they say you're not going to walk again it's, it's like you can't uh, comprehend how I started to not want to do things like come out of the house, speak to certain people, and not want to use my wheelchair. Depressed and I was just in a dark place and uh, didn't want to do anything at all. More than anything, we wanted to be represented by a firm that understood what could we really be doing. We chose Owen Mitchell. I was always supported at every point. I felt relieved um, that I could sort of move on knowing that I was rightfully put in a position to take care of myself for my future. My film has been uh, massively supportive. She was always there to talk to me or calm me down or reassure me that Everything's going to be okay. We get married in May uh, 2022 in Portugal, um, and it'll, I suppose, mark a huge milestone in our relationship. Fabulous feeling when Nicola phoned me and told me that the case had been awarded in my favour. When I was first diagnosed, I had very negative thoughts. If you looked at the prognosis for anyone with mesothelioma, it wasn't great. So I was already planning my funeral. I knew that mesothelioma was an industrial disease and that it can be possible to get compensation. Working with Erwin Mitchell and particularly Nicola gave us great confidence knowing that we could have more treatment that wasn't available on the, on the NHS and that my family would be financially secure once I've gone. Nicola is the definition of the human touch. She's been so helpful throughout my illness, um, but in a really genuine, caring way. I would have been absolutely lost without her. Well, before diagnosis, uh, I think I had a fairly normal life. I was self-employed, worked as a magician, and uh, I ran some properties for a friend of mine. And it was busy, busy, trying to earn a living. My favourite trick was turning paper into money. People seem to like that. I don't know why. I'm still here, still fit and well still doing sport, taking the dog out, doing all those sorts of things. Yeah, so life's good. Yeah.